Good afternoon. The 14B District Court is now back in session. The court will call the case of Westland Car Care Towing versus Heather Schaefer, 24C. Did I do this backwards? No. Nope, that's right. Heather Schaefer, 24C0221. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. May I please the court, Keith Cox of Winters and Associates, on behalf of the plaintiff, P59146. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Stuart Collis, an uh, rare appearance on defense side, P49530. Good afternoon. All right. We're here uh, for a pretrial in this case. Yes, Your Honor. Have the parties talked? Do we think there's any potential resolution? Do we need discovery? Where are we with this? My opinion is I think this matter is going to settle in the very near future on the basis of the amount of controversy and the fact we have two learned attorneys working diligently to get to that resolution. Um, I, I'm kind of open. I, I don't plaintiff doesn't need discovery on the matter, but to the extent 30 days would help facilitate a, a window to get the matter resolved, maybe that would be appropriate. Mr. Collins? And, that, and that's fine, Your Honor. Uh, I know that I, I was chatting Mr. Cox in the meeting area uh, with some suggestions as a settlement. I, I think, as he indicated, there's not a lot here to litigate. So uh, just that 30 day window, if you would, and, you know, hopefully we can resolve it in between. All right. In that case, I'll uh, op keep discovery open until. Let's just go with uh, June 28th for discovery being open. Okay. And I'll give you a pretrial date for July 11th. Uh, a final pretrial date, does that work? Uh, that work. Something oh, just happened on July 11th to me, so let, let me double check. All right. Uh, what was it I put on July 11th? I'll make it work one way or the other, Your Honor. All right, July 11th, 2024. We'll do it at 2 p.m. again, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, and, and Stuart, can you just email me whatever settlement offer your client has and something in writing that I can run to my client? No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Have a good day. Have, there are no other um, incidences out, arising out of this transaction that may come up, right? That's correct. Yeah. All right. Or that have been filed in the past. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Forest Health Medical versus Moises Feliciano, case number 21C0386. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Stuart Collis on the behalf of the plaintiff. Good afternoon. Please un unmute your device. Yes, there you go. I, I, I figured out. Um, yes, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Moises Feliciano. Thank you. Your Honor. Um, go ahead, Mr. Collins. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm, I'm just get going when I have resolutions, you know? I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> In any event, Your Honor, uh, we have resolved this case, or I think we've resolved this case because literally my staff about five minutes ago placed a conditional dismissal on my uh, desk. It's, uh, and I, I'm just going to read it into the record. And if Mr. Feliciano agrees, I can sign his name and we'll go from there. And uh, uh, okay not, you yeah. can tell me what the problem is. <laughs> so the, paragraph one says parties have meet, uh, reached a means of resolving the settlement uh, above and captioned matter. And defendant agrees to pay the plaintiff the sum of $2,742.44 as full settlement of this account. Paragraph two, defendant will pay this amount of 
$85.61 on or before July 19, 2024, and $685.61 on the 19th day of every third month until paid in full. Paragraph three, in consideration of an anticipation of defendant making this payment, this matter shall be conditionally dismissed without prejudice. Paragraph four, in the event the defendant fails to pay in accordance with this agreement, plaintiff may submit an affidavit of noncompliance and proof of service to the court for an entry of an immediate judgment. Paragraph five, the court upon review of the affidavit and proof of service shall reinstate the case and enter the judgment against the defendant in the amount of $2,507.62 plus interest from the date of plaintiff's complaint was filed, court costs and statutory attorney fees, less any payments that have been made. Defendant shall remit payments pay made payable to Collis Griffer and Hendra PC at 1851 Washtenaw Avenue, Ypsilanti, Michigan, 48197, and should refer to this case number. Paragraph seven, should defendant complete his monthly payment successfully, the dismissal without prejudice will be converted to a dismissal with prejudice. That is my understanding of the agreement my office and Mr. Feliciano have reached in this matter. Thank you, Mr. Feliciano. Is that a correct statement of the agreement, sir? That is correct. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah, sign your name, Mr. Feliciano. Sir, we need you to answer out loud if yes or yes, no. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I okay, that's correct. okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. All right. I will uh, sign that agreement upon its presentation. Thank you for working this matter through. And I think we're all set. All right, Your Honor. I'll email it to That's the court fine. shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Court will be on a brief recess until the next matter is ready to be called.
Okay. All right, the 14B District Court is now back in session. The court will call the case of Next Homes Incorporated versus Sampson Group LLC, Sampson, I mean, Miles Sampson and Sarah Sampson, case number 23C3099. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Richard Mueller, P58626, on behalf of plaintiff. All right. Is Mr. Lisinski here on that matter? I don't think so. Good afternoon, Your Honor. No, I'm here on 3792. Okay. All right. Well, maybe we need to wait just a little bit. I thought I had both attorneys. So I'm going to judge. get more time to see if the other 230 attorney, I think there's an attorney on that case, mm -hmm. um, shows up. So we're waiting for Mr. McAvoy, I guess. All right. Thank you. We'll wait a little longer.
All right. The 14B District Court is back in session. The court will recall the case of Next Homes Incorporated versus Sampson Group LLC, Miles Sampson and Sarah Sampson. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Richard Mueller, P58626 on behalf of plaintiff. Good afternoon again. Chris McAvoy appearing on behalf of defendant Sarah Sampson only. All right. So you don't represent the Sampson Group? Or, Your Honor, I've uh, entered into a settlement agreement with the Sampson Group and is it um, Miles? Miles Sampson. All right. And, and this matter has been put off once, given us some time for Miles to pay, and that would resolve the matter. My understanding, oh, I, I believe Chris's understanding as well, is that he's waiting for the divorce to be filed and some finalized and then some kind of payment from the divorce to be able to pay this dollar amount. And so that's why this is moving forward and, and kind of been put off a little bit. And I'm not sure where the divorce is at. Fair to I say. Chris? I remember now this case was reinstated oh. as to Sarah Sampson only. I wrote my own notes. If I would just read those, it would be much better for everybody. All right. So as a result, um, what is the request for today? Do you need additional time, Mr. McAvoy? What do you want to do? Discovery? What would you like to do? Well, I believe my client's not responsible in this matter. It could probably be resolved by way of dispositive motion. But before we get to that, the easier path would be is if Miles just paid, then this issue would be resolved as to her and we wouldn't have to argue any further. So I'm okay with the court adjourning it for a bit longer to allow him to come up with the money to pay it. And if not, then a dispositive motion date. So what I'm hearing is that you believe that once Mr. Miles Sampson gets his monies, whatever that is, from wherever that is, he's gonna yeah. pay off the debt. It will take care of the entirety of the debt. Um, and then therefore, Miss Sarah Sampson's Sampson's matter should become moot. Is that how you? That's right. Okay. Okay. And we would enter a dismissal as to Sarah once that once it's paid. I see. Okay. So we all agree on that piece of it. What What is the status of the divorce? Since that may be the trigger for the money, I guess. When do you think that's going to happen? The divorce is concluded. Okay. He was awarded money from is uh, marital share, half of the marital share out of uh, her 401k. Okay. Or a portion. He was awarded a portion of her 401k. Gotcha. We have entered a quadro, which has been sent to the plan administrator. So okay. the quadro has been entered. Plan administrator has it. Needs plan to approve it. And, move and at their own speed. Gotcha. Okay. So, Do you know when the plan administrator got it? Month, month, six weeks ago. Okay, so it could be any time now. In other words, got you. Who knows? Okay. But allegedly, they're going to process it timely, which their timeliness and ours are two different. And we're, as attorneys and judges, we move at our own speed as well. So I think we can appreciate how others do it to us, and it's some level <laughs> on some level. It, um, it, it does happen that way. So they'll get to it when they get to it, and then he'll get his share. And he has made the representation that once he receives that money, he's going to settle some bills, including this one. And what I should do is, uh, why don't I adjourn the pretrial one more time? I'm going to adjourn it 60 days and see what happens. If we're not there then, then we should probably set it over for dispositive motions at that point and see if that resolves it. If not, we'll know what path we're on. Okay? Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Pre-trial is adjourned to August 8th, 2024. And that'll be at 2 p.m. Very good. Thank you. August 8th, 2 p.m. All right. Yeah. Well, hopefully we just get you an order dismissing the case and we won't see you again, but you never know. Thank I'm you. Okay. And we don't need any discovery or anything in the interim time period, do we? I have no, I don't think there's anything extended or anything necessary right now. We'll set it for another pre-trial. No, I, th I think I, I don't think the facts are that much in dispute. Just the application of a lot of the facts is all we really need. All right. Thank you. You're all set. August twenty eighth, two p.m. August eighth. August eighth. I lied. Okay. <laughs> you said it. August eighth, two p.m. 
calmly. I'm like, did I say that? Like, no. <laughs> Can't <laughs> trust me. Okay, thank you guys. We'll see you on August 8th.
Your Honor, may I ask a question, please? What's the question, sir? Yeah, I just wanted to confirm that 23C3792 is on your docket this afternoon. At 2.45, I give them 15 minutes. Oh, okay. I had 2.30. No problem. Oh, thank you.
All right, the 14B District Court is now back in session. The court will call the case of Credit Acceptance Corporation versus Vanessa Mendoza and um, uh, Kelsey Linderman, case number 23C3792. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Brant Lashinsky, P84238, uh, Pentec, Cover and Kobalak. I'm here on behalf of Ms. Vanessa Mendoza. Uh, I'd like to just update the court. Her, She's been recently married. Uh, it's Vanessa Pokoy, P-O-K-O-J. Thank you. If I may, Your Honor, she did attest to that in the affidavit attached to our motion for summary disposition. Thank you. A Mr. Uh, Andrew Cat Cates uh, was just allowed into the courtroom. Mr. Cates, please unmute your device and state your name and your appearance for the record. Yes, Your Honor. Andrew Cates, P78292, standing in for counsel of record, representing Credit Acceptance Corporation. Thank you. All right, we're here today in this particular matter because the defendant, Ms. Vanessa Mendoza's attorney, filed a motion for summary disposition in this case. It appears to me, Mr. Uh, Lezinski, that um, the attorneys have, in response to your motion, submitted a copy of the actual contract that was involved in this case. Is that correct? It does appear to be correct, at least allegedly, Your Honor. Yes. All right. Um, yes, allegedly, because your client denies ever signing any such documentation. So uh, you may proceed with your argument as to any other requests. I think that the issue yeah. for this court is, I think it creates a clear issue of fact regarding whether or not she signed that document or didn't sign that document. Um, she's obviously submitted an affidavit that I've read that says she did not co-sign and she did not sign this document. It is not a co-sign situation. It is, but she's actually the, um, the, the main debtor in the, in the document and not a, a co-signer to it um, as, I, as I read the document. Am I, am I correct about that? Yes, I, I had reviewed that document as well, Your Honor. And to me, and I read it as such, it says buyer name and co-buyer. So I don't think it assigns a priority of, of signees, so to speak. So I, I would consider them both, according yeah. to this document, co-buyers such that they both have theoretically the same responsibility. Gotcha. I agree. May I, may I speak on our attempt to contact the second possible defendant, Ms. Linderman? You may. Um, well, Honor, Your Honor, we've had multiple attempts uh, to to serve Miss Linderman. I believe she has an alias as well. Uh, her first address uh, we had searched for came up as no forwarding address. Uh, resident moved. The second address said no change of address on file, and there was a gentleman at the house who was quite aggressive with the process server. After several attempts, the process server left a card and received an aggressive message telling him not to ever come back. Um, but we did file a motion um, for a second summons, which was which was uh, accepted. And the second summons is due for expiration by July 24th, according to my notes. So we have not been able to locate the other defendant. However, part of our argument is in such that plaintiff should be actually at least in part seeking um, this co-signer to the contract if, if indeed it is legit. As to our motion for summary disposition, as your honor stated, it's become somewhat procedurally awkward in that when the complaint was filed, and as I've spoken to in my reply to their response, um, there was no attached contract attached to the initial complaint. When our offices contacted uh, counsel's office for an attach or copy of that complaint, they refused to give it to us and said that they would not turn it over until discovery was ordered. Okay, so to us at that point, that made sense to file the motion for summary disposition. Um, we have we had no document or instrument connecting our client at that point to the transaction. In counsel's response to our motion for summary disposition, as your honor obviously knows, there all of a sudden is this contract document attached. Further in their response, they state twice that it was attached 
to the complaint. Uh, we did ch double check with the court to see if it had been missed or lost somewhere. It was not ever attached to the complaint. So admittedly, assuming, let's say, for argument's sake, that this is a legitimate document, we had no no awareness of it, nor did our client, and hence we filed our motion for summary disposition. Our request in that reply, should this case go forward, um, I'm, I'm happy to see counsel showed up respectfully. There, there's been some frustration since the very beginning getting communication with brother counsel's firm. Um, but we think our position with our reply, Your Honor, is that there's been a lot of cost that has been attributed to Ms. Pocoy Mendoza um, that could have been avoided had counsel sent us over a copy of the instrument from the very beginning as we politely requested. So the motion, none of these hearings would have necessarily been been required of our of our 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 client had counsel been willing to work with us on the document. That's kind of my my closing that that is why we asked for sanctions in our in our reply. As this case may have to go to trial due to the fact of this instrument providing um, some type of of evidence in question per the motion for summary disposition, I have, you know, I understand that some of this may need to wait. Thank you. As to the amount of your request for sanctions? Um, we asked for $2,500 in our reply. Our, our, uh, our clients incurred about $3,168 in defending herself in this matter. Um, we have $40 in court costs, and uh, we will ask for sanctions of $2,500, so total would be $5,708. What is the amount you spent on this motion, Mr. Lisinski? Um, I ha will have to look. I don't have that figure right in front of me, Your Honor, but I probably can see it in just a matter of moments here. Right. Thank you. Um, basically, the, the motion itself... Let's see if I can see it. Okay. A moment. Probably. Yeah, on just our our motion and our reply. Estimating for the for um, expedience of the court, Your Honor, fifteen hundred. All right, thank you, Mr. Cates. What would you like to say in response, sir? I um, have looked at the complaint myself. I understand your standby counsel or stand-in counsel, but I looked at the complaint myself, and I don't see where this contract was ever attached. Uh, Your Honor, uh, from the notes I'm reading, the the uh, counsel of record has told me that the complaint was attached. If it didn't uh, make it into the court, then I don't know what to say to that. Um, however, the uh, the yeah. plaintiff's position on the on this whole thing is is that um, you know. Uh, at least at the at the time, I know this is changing changing now due to the uh, circumstances of this case. Uh, it was it, it was plaintiff's position not to provide documents until discovery was ordered, so it could be done in an orderly fashion, and we you know wouldn't have to produce multiple copies for you know. Anyways, so that being said, I mean you know. There was no discovery at the time this this case was initiated, and it, it seems to me, with all due respect to Brother Counsel, that he just pretty much jumped the gun, you know, instead of asking for some discovery and making a formal request that, you know, he files a motion for summary, you know, uh, I'd like to respond when, when you're done, Counselor. There's no need for a response. 
Yes, ma'am. Anything further, yeah. Mr. Gates? Uh, I mean, for for what brought for what opposing counsel has said, I mean, you know, the uh, the uh, you know, we thought that the the uh, contract was attached to the complaint. Well, there, there's uh, the problem. there, right there is a problem that I have, Mr. Case, and it's not with you. I understand your stand in counsel today. The complaint itself, I'm reading it, says right here in the complaint on um, item number two. Plaintiff's claim is based on a written instrument which is not attached as it is in the possession of the adverse party. So the the, the uh, response that was provided to this court is absolutely incorrect. And it is clearly written in the document that they filed. And not only that, but when counsel requested a copy of the contract so that he could adequately defend his client, I have a letter here where they said they wouldn't give it to him because discovery hadn't been ordered yet. That is not the way these things are supposed to work. There was no common courtesy in that. I don't feel like he jumped the, John, the gun. I felt like instead of him waiting to cost his client more monies, if you don't have proof that she was involved in this matter, he filed the appropriate motions. I do think sanctions are appropriate. I've never done it since I've been on the bench, but this is one of the cases in which I do. Now, as to the amount, that's a different question. First of all, the motion for summary disposition is denied for all the reasons I placed on the record before. There clearly is an issue of fact as to whether or not she was a party to this contract or not. I think the parties are going to need to look into, from what I have here, is the electronic signature. I don't know how those come about, how that happens, and she's denying that she ever did it. So that's questionably, that is clearly a question of fact for the trial effect in this particular case. So therefore, the motion for summary disposition is denied. As to the sanctions, I am not happy with the way that this matter was handled by um, original counsel for the plaintiff in this case, not you, Mr. Um, Kate's that, but the fact of the matter is when he asked for a copy of the contract, which they clearly had since they produced it as soon as the motion for summary dis dis disposition was filed, they could have given him that and we wouldn't be here. So based on that, I am going to give them sanctions in the amount of $1,000. We need a pre-trial date. Unless we can dismiss this today. No, it's not going to get dismissed. Okay. Thank you. Of course. I understand why you want that, but. Yeah. No objections, Your Honor. I absolutely respect that position. The. I can give you a pre-trial of. Uh, do you want 30 or 60 days? And since discovery is such a huge issue, looks like we're going to need some in this case, some real discovery. Um, do we want 60 days or 90 days for discovery? What do we need? Uh, my inclination, Your Honor, would be 60 to 90 days on this particular matter. I leave it to the discretion of the court or maybe opposing counsel as another opinion. No, I agree. 60 to 90 days, particularly, uh, Your Honor, in terms of the fact that we would, I would hope Brother Counsel and his firm may be able to help us in this, but it would be um, helpful for all parties if we could get this Ms. Linderman um, properly served and party to this this action. So 60 to 90 days is going to be, so that date's 724 for the second summons to expire. Um, let's see where we're at. That's about 60 let's go somewhere between 60 and 90 past the end of july probably i'm gonna go to um august 29th okay august 29th well actually what i'm gonna do is go to i want discovery to end like a week before then you want to be done on a friday uh, uh, thursday one exact week would be 22 August okay. 22nd. Discovery through August 22nd. 2024. We'll do a pre-trial, another pre-trial to see if we're ready for actual motions for summary disposition or whether we're going to be going to trial. Okay. And that will be on August 29th, 2024. 
at 2 p.m. Please have council have um, someone ready to go in here at the actual time that the case is supposed to start. Today, we had to wait 20 minutes for you to show up, Mr. Cates. I don't know if that's because they didn't communicate something to you properly, but. Um, no, that was my fault, Your Honor. I, I apologize. I was uh, wrapped up uh, taking care of another matter, and I, I do apologize for that. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. We're all set for now. I hope that the uh, parties can talk and try to see if we can get to the bottom of what happened in this matter. So, um, you know, I, I don't take any position on who's telling the truth or not telling the truth, but I want to get to the truth. Okay, so let's try to make that happen. Yes, right. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll talk about alternatives. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.